Hey, Engage Carlton Nation, welcome to another amazing podcast, man. I've got a an amazing story, an amazing uh, thought, an amazing revelation from the Lord that I just want to share with you and unpack with you tonight. Um, I was watching a movie with my daughter two weeks ago, is it two or three weeks ago? Uh, one of the ways me and my daughter bond is through movies and watching this movie called Crudes, Crudes Part 2. It's a movie about uh, prehistoric uh, cave people who stay in caves and are fighting for survival. And in this movie, um, the main protagonist, this family of cavemen, um, in their process of migrating throughout the prehistoric, a prehistoric fantasy world, end up uh, with another family. They, they finally meet another family. All this time, they've just been roaming around alone. And they finally, uh, in their travels, they bump into a family. And that family is a bit more advanced in terms of uh, technology and civilization. So when they encounter this family, something interesting happens in that they don't live in a cave. They actually live in a house. And in that house, they see an invention which was not present in their cave. They see what is known as a window. And when they look at this window, the way they treat that window, they treat it the way we treat television. So one of the characters says, I'm going to watch window. I'm going to watch the window. And when he's looking out the window, he can see um, one of his animals outside. And in his mind, he's treating the window like it's a television. So he's watching um, his pet outside like it's somewhere far away, yet it is so close. And um, it's interesting how we process news and information um, on television and smartphone. Many times we seem, to have, we seem to have this dichotomy, we seem to have this ambiguity in terms of how we process bad news. When we're looking at our smartphone or when we're looking at the television, we don't process the news we're seeing as something far away. We actually look at our TV as if it's a window. Like it is showing us an event that's happening outside in our backyard. When we're seeing bad news, we turn our television or our smartphone into a window. And we process bad news like it is something that is happening right now and is going to affect me and harm me immediately. And I find it very interesting in terms of how we process bad news. And this is because of a condition which psychologists call catastrophizing. Catastrophizing. Catastrophizing is when someone assumes the worst thing is going to happen and happen immediately. And many of us, when we get bad news, when we get that bad SMS or we get that bad phone call, our initial response to bad news is that what we've just seen is going to happen immediately something bad is going to happen immediately we turn our smartphone into a window we make the bad news so close and so immediate than it really is and catastrophizing another um, definition which psychologists give is it involves believing you are in a worse situation than you really are in and this is extremely It's extremely demonic, it's extremely scary how we have a tendency of believing that our situations, every one of us, we have a way of constantly concluding that my situation is worse than it really is. And I want you to make this declaration that my situation is not as bad as I think it is. And the enemy has a way of making us believe that our situations are even worse than they really are. And uh, catastrophizing also involves exaggerating the difficulties you face. And that's one of the things the enemy likes to do in your life, is to make you always exaggerate how bad or how difficult the situation is. And sometimes we turn difficult into impossible. We turn hard into impossible. And hard things, many times hard things are not impossible. They just take prayer, faith, discipline and focus and relentless action. And the hard thing you're facing, you're actually able to overcome it and go to another level. Say in Australia, this is the website I was just researching this, um, identifies or describes catastrophizing as 
irrational thoughts involves us using irrational thoughts to create imaginations that are far worse than the reality that we are facing. It includes what is known as rumination or meditation, where we meditate and allow thoughts to keep going around and round in our head. Negative thoughts and how bad things are going to be. And as children of God, we have to meditate on the word of God. We can't meditate on the circumstance. We mustn't meditate on how bad things are and how bad the situation we are facing is. We have to meditate on the word of God. And another writer, Linda Blur, uh, describes uh, catastrophizing as the use of imagination where we take uncertain news or bad news and then we allow our imagination to create a false reality. And, uh, and it's interesting how when we catastrophize that we use our imagination to create a picture, we get this news, we hear this thing or we see this thing and then our mind begins to create another image. It's like the children of Israel in the book of Numbers when they got to the promised land and they said, we are in, they, they created, they catastrophized when they saw, when they got into the promised land, instead of seeing the, the, the fruit and seeing everything that God wanted to do, they immediately catastrophized. And they said that we are like grasshoppers in their eyes. These people are giants. And they created an image which wasn't even there. How would you know that image wasn't there? When Joshua sent in um, his two spies, after learning that sending too many spies can spoil things, when, it, when the two spies spoke to the, uh, the prostitute Rahab, what the giants actually thought, she told them that we've been scared for 40 years. They created an image in their mind which wasn't real of the challenge. And so many of us as believers, we have this tendency of allowing our imagination to create false realities that do not align with the word of God, that do not align with our gifts, that do not align with our assignments, that do not align with the anointing that God has placed on our lives. And we have to understand that this is faith being used in the opposite direction. Because many times when we hear bad news and we create an image of disaster instead of an image of faith, an image that is rooted in the faithfulness of God, an image that is rooted in the will of God, in the goodness of God, in a good outcome, in a positive outcome. And we have to learn how to not allow our imagination to create negative images when we receive uh, bad feedback, bad news, or when we see bad news on our smartphones, and when we see bad news on television. Now, um, there's another writer called Gordon Walsh, and um, uh, the way they described how catastrophizing works, they looked at it biologically, and they said that within the human brain, there are two elements in our brain. There's the amygdala, and there's the prefrontal cortex. Now, the way the amygdala works, it's at the base of our brains, the way the amygdala works, it's more um, emotional in its response. While the prefrontal cortex is more rational and it's given to reason, it's given to, to rational thinking. While the amygdala is given to emotion. And, and the amygdala um, is, is a part of our brain that is designed to protect us from danger. And that is where the idea of um, the fight or flight uh, response comes from. It comes from our amygdala. Because our amygdala, when it sees danger, its immediate response is either fight or, or flight. And, and what happens is when we are dealing with catastrophizing, it's these two elements in our brain that are fighting. The element of our brain that is trying to protect us and the element of our brain which is trying to rationalize and trying to understand the, the level of threat or the level of danger uh, that we're facing. And, our, and, and the difficulty we have as human beings is our amygdala in our brain shouts and screams. Yet our prefrontal cortex whispers. Our prefrontal cortex, when it sees danger, it tries to analyze and rationalize and begin to plan and be strategic while our 
amygdala is quick to panic, is emotional, is quick to either say fight or get out of here. Now, there are times where we need our amygdala to kick in when there's like real danger. That uh, we need to get like, for example, if, if you're about to be hit by a car, it's your amygdala, which is get out of the way. Your prefrontal cortex will be sometimes thinking, okay, am I close? Is the car close? Is the, you know, and, um, and sometimes in different relationships, um, sometimes you can be with someone who their amygdala is out of control. They're always responding emotionally. And then you've got another p- person in the couple who is more prefrontal cortex, doesn't panic, is more stoic and is able to analyze and rationalize and say, this is nothing to worry about. And as human beings, we have to learn how to balance the two. And in many times and in most instances, you have to allow your prefrontal cortex, the part which rationalizes and thinks, the part which actually says, you know, you know this, uh, uh, this looks bad, but let... Let's rationalize. Let's think about this logically before we panic and begin to rush and begin to worry that, oh, it's the end of the world. And Isaiah 53 verse 1 gives us a very good scripture. And it says, who has believed our report? Who has believed our report? And one of the things I want to segue in Psalm 53 verse 1 pertaining to this is, before you catastrophize, before you run to say it's the end of the world, particularly right now with all this, um, with this uh, global pandemic we've come out of and we are slowly coming out of, before you rush to, to always be on the panic button, I want you to ask yourself, am I turning what I'm seeing on my phone? Is my smartphone a window or is it just a smartphone? What's the distance between me and this bad news? And some of you have made the distance between you and bad news so close. You're so quick to bring bad news into your backyard. You're so quick to turn your smartphone into a window. You're reading something happening in Turkey. You're reading about something happening in Russia, something happening in Wyoming. And you're here in Africa, in Johannesburg. And you're bringing that issue, that negativity that's happening that far right into your living room, right into your car, right in. You're you're shortening the distance between you and the negativity. And Isaiah 53 always tells us how we need to frame the world. We need to frame the world through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. That we are living in a new world which Hebrews 8 verse 6 tells us we're in a new covenant that has better promises. So we don't process circumstances and negativity the way the world does it. We always process it knowing that we've got a God in our life and that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we've got God with us. No matter what we face, Jesus died and rose again, and he is seated on the right hand of the Father. So we don't process bad news the same way the world does. We process it knowing that we have a promise that in this age and in the age to come, that there's something better, and that God's hand, God's purpose, God's will is being unfolded and unraveled in our lives. And we never panic when we're under attack. We never panic when we get bad news, stop turning your smartphone into a window. Stop turning your TV into a window. Stop turning an SMS or a WhatsApp or whatever it is, whatever DM it is, into a window. Stop bringing all that negativity so close. You always have to look at it through the framing of the cross. Whose report shall you believe? Shall you believe Um, the report of the world you can just go right now on any website right now you're going to get bad news there's bad news about south africa there's bad news about africa there's bad news about nigeria there's bad news about america there's 
but people are still living, people are still getting married, babies are still being born, companies are still making billions, somehow in this world where everything is so bad, Amazon is making trillions, somehow in this world where everything is so bad, there's a new Space Jam movie coming, somehow in this world there's people who are still creating, living their lives, producing beauty, producing music, producing ministry, producing books, producing amazing things. And our report as children of God is not the report of the world. Our, ours is to believe the report of the Lord. That we've got a destiny, we've got a purpose. There's something great within us that God wants to release into the world for His glory um, in this age and in the age to come. And we just have to be faithful, faithful to our assignments, faithful to our callings. And I want to encourage you today, stop turning your smartphone into a window. Stop turning your smartphone into a window. Stop making things that are happening so far away from you, out of your control, bringing them into your house and bringing them into your life. Create separation. Create that distance and understand that God is in control and that you are a child of destiny, you are a child of purpose. And ultimately, at the end of the day, nothing can override God's will and God's timing. And everything that you're believing for and praying for and pressing for will come to pass in God's will and in God's timing. So don't lose hope. Don't lose heart. When you, when you see bad news or you see something bad, it's time just to trust God. I want to encourage you in this season. Shift your thinking. Shift your mindset. And trust God. It's time to trust God. God bless you.